Hello everyone and welcome to another season re-review. I'm Mikey Burrows from Wolves TV. With me as ever is Tim Spears, the Athletics Wolves correspondent and Tom Parry, podcaster, comedian and Wolves fan. We are going a fair way back this time to an incredible season of 97-98 and as we are seeing boys, we are seeing the key moment of that season so we don't need to watch any more. Switch it off everybody. <laughs> Straight in there. By the way, we, we, we've got to we've got to pay tribute to that to that opening music, which I'd like to think was personally chosen by Mark McGee. Um, <laughs> We're immediately back into a golden age of the nineties, aren't we? Oh, this shirt. is what a what a beautiful wool shirt, plunging neckline. Oh no, hang on, we'll come to that. Don't you worry. We'll wait. We'll wait for some down <laughs> periods of games because I've got a lot I need to talk about. That um, Robbie Keane, the emergence of Robbie Keane. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I remember him being spoken about that summer, and in the in like the Express and Star or, or or whatever, or just among fans, it's like, who's this kid? This wonder kid, genuinely wonder kid. And then, yeah, what a season he had. Because um, he makes Tom pretty much an immediate impact in this game. Yeah, I, I mean, I can remember just. I can't remember being so excited to see the arrival of a new player. Oh, oh look at that. Thing 17. I noticed in this, by the way, have you seen the two Wolves fans in the home end behind the goal? It go up, <laughs> just can't help themselves. Watch it on this replay in a minute. Just to the right of the goal, there's one at the front and one in white, about ten rows up or something. Cannot help himself. Hey, <laughs> there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Makes for an awkward rest of the game, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. But yeah, immediate impact. Oh, I think. And he just looked like a different class. He always looked like he was two or three passes ahead of the game. I just, oh, so exciting. Just look at that, that skill. So brazen. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Norwich fans applauding there in the home. Well, unless they were more Rogue Wolves fans, but you know when the, the home fans are applauding a goal, it's a good one. It's like, you know, all, the, all that stuff that you see of, from Robbie Keane in his career. It's just like, it makes it weird to think that he just did that from day one. But he was like, yeah. you know, when like, you know, when Rooney came in and he was so raw and he just did things that nobody else did. And then that sort of got slightly coached out of him by Fergie and he became just an incredible all-round player. <laughs> that sort of like Robbie Keane at the start, he was just raw. He just did whatever he wanted. He took players on. He dribbled, he scored amazing goals. He wasn't a team player at all. Oh, but he was so good to watch. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. Oh, Stevie Froggart. This is the era, boys. Absolute names to conjure with. By the way, <laughs> did you, we, we kind of missed because Tim was talking. Robbie Keane does that on debut, and still, Mark McGee went out and went, Yeah, I'm going to need Mixu Patalina, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> There's always room for Mixu. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, because I was doing some research, it might appear in a future Wolves quiz, or it might have done by the time this goes out, who knows, that he was the only Finnish international to play for Wolves. Interesting. Frog that, was Frog was quality. I, I, I interviewed was, him the, the other week, and he kind of said he actually played more than people think, you know, because he, yeah. he was injured a lot, but, I mean, he, he got in the England squad not long after he left Wolves. Yeah, he was so rapid, wasn't he? He was such a such a quality winger. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. What a start to the season. R off to an absolute flyer. Was that Mark Venus? He was Who was that? Big strong fella. Big strong fella. Oh, no, it was Mixu. Yeah, I was going to say Venus. Oh, with the goal, yeah, it was Mixu, Venus yeah. isn't still around, is he? He went to Ipswich it's around this Yeah. Time. It's just Mixu Battalion and looks like a big central defender. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he he was one of many players who really appreciated that this was the era of baggy shirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He tr tried his best to fill it. <laughs> it's a finish. You know, it's early yet. You know, we're happy with the two results. Oh no, it's early yet. Oh. Steady on, boys. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's not remembered fondly by fans or players really well no some, some players speak kindly about him but no there's a lot who've come on old goal club 
who were not big fans of him, to be honest. Just and why not? Him, what wasn't it? it? Was it? What were their problems with him? A um, little bit, I guess, maybe man management. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously, looking at him there, Don Goodman. There's a, there's a bit we'll get to in the season. I don't want to spoil it yet, but obviously, there are certain reasons, certain big decision he makes later on in this campaign. Oh, don't even start on that. That um, that a lot <laughs> of people turn on him against. I, I think it's just you know it's that thing, isn't it? Like people get on better with the assistant sometimes, and obviously, Colin was a bit of a weird character as well by all accounts, but was kind of the, the more likable of the two. But although Chris Uelamo played for him later in his career and he said he liked him. Oh, so we just talk oh, over this one. No. No, oh, no, 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 no. Never good to see. <laughs> no. We we no, we'd done no. the double over them the year before. Do you remember that one? Women won four two here. Yeah. But yeah, this was, oh dear. They can't sell it out though, can they, eh? Empty seats there. Oh, oh Keith. No, Keith. no, no. Keith, what are you doing? That was Pesky oh. Solido as well, by the way, who we saw in our other one. Was chasing that in, I'm sure it was. Yeah. McGee finally makes changes for the return leg with Queen's Park Rangers. Young Carl Robinson makes his debut. What a player. <laughs> Look how young Carl Robinson is. It, I mean, the, how old was Carl Robinson there? Is he also like 17, 18? He's got to be pretty, pretty young. Oh. Oh. Because we should, re- should remember that this came just after... One of those awful um, playoff defeats. Yeah. Do you remember the end of the season before, that Palace game? Yeah. Yeah, horrible. Absolutely horrible. And um, also, because they'd finished third that season, but also uh, Tomo left in the summer. Well, so we all just have well, a moment's I- silence. <laughs> he only left. <laughs> he, 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 he didn't shuffle off the mortal coil. Don't, don't get onto bu- this. Is sounding like bully from the last one. Do you remember? <laughs> sorry, I'm just observing the moment there for Tomo's voice. <laughs> sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, everyone else was. Come on, Tom. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Let's show some respect. Dan Ferguson, blind. So. What was your opinion on Darren Ferguson? Because I always I couldn't get over the. F- I always felt like he wouldn't really. Was he good enough? You know, or was think, it because of who if, his dad was? It, yeah, if he was Howard Kendall's son, I, I don't think he'd have made it. To be honest, yeah. but because he was Darren <laughs> Alex Ferguson's son. Um. Oh dear. In fairness, there are quite a few players I think who, um, come through Man United's academy or leave Man United as young players and go to other clubs who aren't really that good it's just because they've got Man United on the CV oh Berry are about to get annihilated go on <laughs> Berry take that yes <laughs> <laughs> that's the most excited yeah. you've been in about two and a half hours of these recordings <laughs> the thrashing of Berry early in the season oh they didn't see it coming did they <laughs> So you've got Keane, Bull and Goodman in this team. And Patalone. As in in as in, in this game. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a front three. Jamie Smith there as well. Doesn't don't we have don't we have Claridge later on in the season? Oh, I imagine that. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, let's save it. Let's save it. Let's save it. Yeah, that's later in the season. Let's 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 put that on the back burner. I've, I've been talking about that this morning. The the the, the FA Cup semi final. It comes it comes up so often. But this game, this win against Berry, it never comes up at all. Which is <laughs> that's weird, isn't it? Really. <laughs> Well, he's still going. I think he was the one that said Mark McGee improved his improved his game. I think he's fairly complimentary about him as a as a coach. Made him yeah, a all, all he said he, he said he improved his positional play, didn't it? Uh, and, uh, and and stopped him playing just as an out and out goal scorer, mm, which I, I guess he had to as, as his knee went. To, yeah, yeah. Because think they said early on in Bully's career that they. I remember. I think it was Ali Robertson was telling us that they kind of. They used to work on him even before Graham Turner came in, and they said, "Look, just shoot. Don't do too much. Just hit it low at the keeper, and nine times out of ten, the keeper won't be able to get down." Mm. And that was their that was their kind of I was going to say race on detra. That sounds really terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Ponzi. 
Um, that's too that's too it's too posh for this as well. <laughs> you, you, you got to think of your audience here. <laughs> yes. Bully looked great in that strip. Mm. It it really suits him. It, I, don't, I don't know. I, if I picture Bully, I picture him. Manders painting ink. No, maybe like ninety four <laughs> type. Very classic. Black collar. <laughs> Black tint to the sleeves. It's a tremendous strip. It really is. It's high. It's high concept, and I love it. It's like just a, it's a, just a rem- remarkable feat of, of design. Yeah. Imagine the guy going into the meeting, being like, "When you know <laughs> well, you're going to unveil the, the, that." The, <laughs> the, Mav- the maverick who came with yeah. the idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a great feat of design. <laughs> All like, the things that are put up there on a pedestal of the greatest design moments in history. <laughs> The guy who came up with the Dyson Hoover and this shirt. <laughs> well, what's that thing that Michelangelo did? I mean, that's... The Sistine that's Chapel. Right. That's it. <laughs> Robbie. Where are we up to in this game? It's all over as far as that's the fourth, This is all over. Good to come to you. <clears throat> Yeah, I think but Bully's told me before... Keen just used to infuriate him as a partner because he would he would never pass. Just never pass. Just that one one track mind for goals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean imagine being able to do this at the Molly at seventeen. Like 17. I think I, I think I was seventeen this season, seventeen, eighteen. And I was doing you know I mean my biggest event was getting into the Dorchester on a Thursday night with some fake ID. They're unbeaten so far this season and they're, they're, they're a tough, well organised team. And, you know, God, I love Mickey Stahl. Back in his chain as well. September begins with Steve Sedgley joining Keith Curl on the injury list. Chris Coleman is called up for his debut against Port Oh, my goodness. Who? From Bolton, I think, on loan. Oh, he was shocking. Chris Coleman. I think it was, si- it was Simon, Simon Coleman. Simon Coleman, it? yeah. Did they, did Simon they just call him Chris? Coleman. Yeah, I'm sure they did. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, don't look, they don't look similar. <laughs> Nobody bothered to check the script in 1998. <laughs> that, that is a... That is a an image there when Bully's on his knees that he's 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 got that. I'm sure he's got that. Um, yeah, it's a pretty iconic photo, isn't it? It's a print because Glenn Glenn Crow huddles up next to him, and it's, it's a sort of a who is that guy kind of. Moment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> it's a class goal, if, though. If you're listening, Glenn. <laughs> no offence. <laughs> it's a great goal. And you see, low and to the side of the keeper. Basically, Glenn, what we're saying is uh, you are not th- not as highly thought of as Adam Proudlock in Tim Spears' mind. <laughs> He's about level with Colin Larkin, who people might remember from, from the last season we did. Oh. oh, God, I remember that. That's cheeky. Martin Foyle must have been at least 60 at that season. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> you, you, having a pop at bald footballers. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, what was that ground called? The yeah. Manor Ground. Is that Coleman? It is. Yeah, that's Coleman on his ass there, number five. Joey Beecham. Wasn't wasn't he the one that went to like West Ham and yeah. couldn't hand, yeah. hack it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Coleman again. Oh, my God. Coleman's, been, Coleman's oh. been done all game, hasn't he? he did, yeah, he didn't last many. He didn't last very long. Back at Molyneux, a powerful display against Charlton. Puts Wolves back in the top six. Very good. 
good touch. Now can he deliver? Still keen. Played it for ball. Oh, oh yeah. Passed in the air, but eh? <laughs> what you can't tell about this shirt is that it's got lots of little wolf heads contained it's a wolf, within it. As, it's as, wolf as heads well. within a wolf head tessellating. Yes. yes, that's it. Yeah, you can you can buy like um, like knockoff ones, can't you now? Like remakes. Yeah, you, I, I don't think you mean knockoff. Uh, uh, uh. Well, you probably still can buy knockoffs. <laughs> I think they're available at the club shop. I don't think they can be called knockoffs. Yeah, I, th I think it's an official licensed product. <laughs> no, I've definitely seen I've definitely seen knockoffs around because the, there's people who like have got ones that are completely different colour to what I remember. Ah, Stevie Froggart. He's a man that a baggy shirt does not suit. Yeah, that's true. That guy slows him down. In. What a man. <laughs> King. I was a season ticket holder in the Stan Cullis stand this season. That was my end. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, persistent. I, think, I guess this was his, what, penultimate season? I think he had one more after this, Bully. He's still banging him in. Yeah, is this the season where he breaks a couple of records? I think I think it was kind of the season where he was playing with T-shirts under his shirt to get ready to reveal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, what was it, 300 goals, that was a good year. I remember having, having that. Yeah, that's right, yeah. But I think he had it on for quite a few games before he could uh Hang on, was the, was the good year... Like done like the logo. Yes, it was. Yes. Yes. <laughs> never, never missed a trick. Those good year guys. The captain has brought his team back into the game at three-one. Whoever says you, you finished at thirty-two, it baffles me. But uh, I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the game here again now. And as I say, again on the goals week in week out, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> the second round of the Coca-Cola <laughs> Cup takes Wolves to Craven Cottage. Where Garcia San Juan makes his debut on the bench and scores the only goal of the game. Again, who? And he scores. Oh my goodness. Garcia San Juan. Thirty fourth minute to give Wolves a useful first leg lead. Oh, hello. That was tidy. God, well, there's your next quiz question because I can't remember that guy at all. To make his first start of the season. Stadium, it's got to be our first first game at the stadium of light, isn't it? it? Must have just been built. Yeah, it's weird actually that, isn't it? You don't really don't think it's kind of that old. Got a chance here to get a good ball in. Oh, oh that's got in. That's a terrible own goal, Andy Melville. <laughs> Andy Melville. <laughs> Oh, so this is the. Um, oh, it's a great finish. This the, Sunderland have just. This is the year after. Is this after the playoff final? No, no, that was that was. Is that is that this year? Oh, that might be this year or or the year after. Yeah, because the playoff final must have been Palace. Yeah, it's, yeah, Palace Leicester, yeah. I think. Oh, is this the great Bill Hatton commentating? Three days later, Wolves struck in the very Legend. first minute when Steve Ball made a dream start against Huddersfield. And Patalainen well forward. So too Robbie Keane. Oh, camera. That's around. you, Tom, in the North Bank. You hear that? There we go. <laughs> it's not very often you could hear us, but <laughs> giving it some welly there. I mean, great camera work here. <laughs> it's yeah, like sensible yeah. soccer. <laughs> Just to add to that 90s feel. <laughs> Ooh, bully, bully. So have either of you two still got that shirt, the original one? Yes. Have you? I think I've got the away one as well. I, I absolutely loved it. I had, I only had the away one, which was the white and green, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and again, another nice kit. Good year for kits. 
<laughs> Pun intended. He's brought it down well. That's a cracking goal from Marcus Stewart. It's 1 1. Marcus Stewart. These are some great names. October begins with a losing sequence that starts at Bradford. Wolves have done rather better defensively in the last few minutes. Steiner's onside here. Surely now the Swede. <laughs> what did he just say? Wolves have done rather better defensively in the last <laughs> no, few minutes. I was and then there's no one death. in the camera shot as number nine sticks. <laughs> and in. everyone's just watching, yeah. It's just like stationary. His first job is to keep the ball in play. His second is to assess what's on in the middle. He does that well. There's a lot of powerful headers already in this season, isn't there? This is a great throwback. Mm. Have you seen that? Um, there's a Twitter account of footballers ageing badly. Lee Naylor talking of footballers ageing badly, but very well. This is his debut at Blues, I remember this. Age 17 as well, I think. Lee Naylor's aged tremendously. <clears throat> Chris Marsden. Chris Marsden. Chris Marsden. Oh, 60 one, years old, of course. Oh, <laughs> oh I didn't like him. Why didn't you like him? I just thought he had a bit of a just he had a bit of an attitude. Which I, I didn't take to. Because that's you think of our team here. In terms of the youth coming through, Lee Naylor, Carl Robinson, Robbie Keane. It's yeah. pretty exciting, isn't it? Like yeah, you still got Bull and Goodman, Frogger. Uh, Dean Richards was still around as well, I think, although he must have been yeah. injured at this point. Keith, Keith Curl, Curl, Dean Richards. Bonus points, anyone that can remember the name of this ground? Elm Park? Yes. Wolves hopes receded when Carlos Saba served up the fourth for McPherson. There was okay. no way back for McGee's men, although Bull did have the final say with his second goal of the match. Bully. Oh. <laughs> McGee's reaction to a first excessive defeat is to sign Doogie Friedman, initially on loan from Crystal Doogie Palace. Friedman, Friedman makes an wow. impact on his debut against Swindon. Again, oh, needed another forward. Yeah. Yeah, and there's more to come later in the Bully, season as well. Keane, Goodman, Dougie Friedman now. Mixed Patalina. Of course, yeah. Um, they also, by the way, signed a young Jason Roberts in this season. Yes, they did, didn't they? You're right. What a debut goal that is. He was good. I always thought he was underrated. I think he only lasts for this season. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. He didn't stick around for very long. They just came and went back then. Ewan Roberts was the season before. I think he only lasted a year. I liked Ewan Roberts. Yeah. He's a lovely Boy. fellow as well. They were, we used to tell a joke about Ewan Roberts, which was... He was in the dress. Did you ever hear the joke where it was like Mark McGee went into the dressing room to give a team talk, and you and Roberts was eating crisps and just throwing the packets on the floor and uh, leaving them there? And Mark McGee says, uh, "You and you rubbish on the floor," and he says, "Yeah, but I'm good in the air, boss." Hey, <laughs> hey. Please, please, please be true. <laughs> Come on, buddy, get in there. Oh, fucking hell. I'm sorry. I mean, surely sends him off. Yes, Chris Foy. <laughs> he's arguing it. <laughs> Love that he's arguing that decision. <laughs> <laughs> and now I think there's a guy going to blame Bully for getting him sent off. <laughs> Look at that, and they're all outraged.
Collins' his teammates. You can hear the reaction Ooh. from the Wolves fans. I like the amount of time being devoted to this. In dejected fashion, troops away. <laughs> it's a very good point, actually. Like, <laughs> this is the most... Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, bully. Putting his hands on the ref. Kubitsky, remember him? Darius, Darius Kubitsky, was it? Darius Kubicki? Yeah. He was a new signing this year. It was the best, it was the best thing he ever did, that was. <laughs> so where are you in that stand? Uh... Top left as you're looking at it now from the penalty spot. I'd be top left of the goal. Freezing in the corner, wind coming round. Oh, like never, always in the shade, never yeah, in sunshine. always in the shade, always a wind coming round the corner. So even on the sunny days, it was always absolutely oh. freezing. Oh, it's a bad-tempered game. Wish we're almost seeing the full... <laughs> it's been about half an hour, it's, it's the game of the season. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and there was a guy who used to sit three rows in front of me who would devote like all of his energy throughout, especially in the second half. Lovely. Just having a go at the people in the family enclosure for not making <laughs> enough noise. So, like, <laughs> like, he was like quite an old boy in his 60s who'd just like constantly be having a go at the family enclosure. Come on, stand up, make some noise. Like, e every game. <laughs> Or producing <laughs> six-year-olds to tears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he clearly would, like used to be sat adjacent to the away fans, but had ended up by the family enclosure. Still wanted to give off a, a similar vibe, <laughs> just like just like screaming at the kids. Come on, make some noise. It was just like, <laughs> it's like it's like it's always the way the games ended. Is he just using a bit of white tape as a captain's armband there? <laughs> Yeah, it was a different time, wasn't oh, it? Get it's in! Paul, Paul Simpson, what a goal! Oh no, it wasn't Paul Simpson. I'm sure it was Paul Simpson. Yeah, it was. I'm sure. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, the cameraman just went for somebody else. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I thought it was. <laughs> yes. This was before. Was this before Beckham's? Uh, the no, original Beckham, was, Beckham was ninety-five, wasn't it? Great for oh, okay. Uh, once we went to go ahead, the whole place just lifted. Oh, lovely suit! It's a huge suit. Old, <laughs> it's big. It's big. Just interviewed him in the in a school gymnasium. That. <laughs> really? Oh, now no, we're talking. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't there wasn't enough red cards in that last game, so that was yeah. yeah. Muscat. <laughs> yeah, they were like Swindon knocked us around a bit. We need an enforcer. <laughs> <laughs> Fight fire with fire. <laughs> Let's get Kevin Muscat in. There is a great story a few people have told about Kevin Muscat, where I think it's in the the o one o two season where it falls apart, and um. They talk about that. I think they were playing like someone like Grimsby or something really random. Yeah. And apparently, all week, Kevin Muscat was saying, like, he's just going to smash somebody. And they were like, yeah, yeah, of course you are, Kevin. He's like, no, no, I'm going to smash someone and get sent off. And they're like, no, 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 don't, don't, he's, nah, don't, he's just being silly. He's just being silly. He doesn't mean it. And then he goes and smashes someone in the game and gets sent off. And they're like, why did he do that? We didn't even have a rivalry with them. That was like part of the decline as well. That was about. Six or seven games for the yeah. end of the season. It's still kind of talked about now. That is, we, I think we lost one nil. I'm sure somebody well, I mean, said to me on an old Gold Club episode that 
um, Dave Jones felt he couldn't like trust him in because the first leg of the playoff semi-final he didn't play, does he? No, he was just Norwich. absolutely mad, man. Yeah, they said they couldn't trust him not to get sent off. Yeah. He um. <laughs> he came and had words with him, my friends, one night in town outside Atlantis. <laughs> I, I love this story already. <laughs> so. <laughs> we, 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 we were in Atlantis and the Wolves team were in there so we'd kind of been around a bit and like I, I think I bought Robbie Keane I remember buying Robbie Keane a drink Brilliant. and it was like the pound a bottle you know like the oh, I don't know WKD for a pound or something and I was like Robbie I bought you a drink and he was like I'm alright thanks <laughs> I was like, I don't want the cheapest alcohol pop that they're selling <laughs> but like at the end of the night when all the Wolves players were coming out of the club we were singing Song. Oh, it's a great goal. Yeah, we we were singing songs to like the Wolves fans, the Wolves players as they were coming out of the club. Like uh, Robbie Keane, we sang to, and like one Kevin Muscat. But then when when Steve Corica came out, we sang a less than complimentary song to Steve Corica, or my mate did. And um, and Kevin Muscat came over, and uh, like t just like basically squared up to uh, like the group and was like, right, who's the biggest lad here? Let's go. <laughs> we had to be like, and like the biggest lad in the group was this tall lad Johnny, and he he did want to you know he did want to fight Kevin Muscat. <laughs> so he was just, Muscat was straight away like, right, come on, who's the biggest lad here? Let's go. <laughs> and we had to be like, sorry, Kevin, we're really sorry, and we all had to apologise to Steve Corica and then leave. <laughs> really spicy. Also, by the way, in that story. Um, this is you admitting to buying a drink for a minor. Well, I'm trying. I don't know if it was this season. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if it was, if it was this season. Because you told a story on the last one that you saw Robbie Keane getting chucked out of a queue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Seventeen. Yeah, no, I didn't see it. I was just told about it. Yeah. Um, so that would have been this season. But I think it. I think it might have been a. Uh, the season after <laughs> just for safety <laughs> I like that we've moved into uh, yeah no commentary here just a yeah. s soft rock soundtrack <laughs> so, it sounds like an instrumental on a, on a Def Leppard album You just don't see poor defending like that these days. Yeah. I mean, I mean he, from where I was, he just kept running and running and running. And he, he, brilliant finish. I mean, guys, I mean, I'd, I'd do his confidence, the world of good. And obviously, you know, Doogie as well. He's brilliant. I mean, you know, the, the lads are really working hard for each other. And obviously, the, the, the way the fans have reacted to the, to the, the players the last three or four games has been unbelievable. It makes such a difference to the players. And, and I think it's shown in the performances the last like, few, few games. Love Steve Frogger. It's just always it seems upbeat. Yeah. You are right, though. He does make any article of clothing seem baggy. <laughs> like that that T-shirt was you, Johnny. <laughs> it's like the incredible shrinking man. Oh, I remember this game. It was absolutely abysmal. Oof. I think this is our first trip to the Britannia as well. I remember being in that way and You know there'll be people watching this who are too young to remember a time when people didn't have names on the back of the shirts. Well yeah, there's no there's this has got to be the last season before squad numbers as well, isn't it? What a goal. Um Yeah, I can't believe squad numbers went around by this point. The misery was completed by the news that Steve Bull faced a lengthy layoff with an injured knee. Bull, just one short of his 300th goal, would miss the next three months. In Bull's absence, Robbie Keane gave Wolves a head start against Ipswich. So handball. When he converted Doogie Freeman's set up to make it 1-0. The glory of pre-VAR. 
The Blues soon had a chance to draw level when David Johnson was brought down in the box by Adrian Williams. Mike Stowell rescued Wolves with a brilliant yes. penalty save from Turner. Oh. But Ipswich still had the okay. final say a minute before half time. David Johnson drilled home the equaliser to make it 1 1. Mm. <laughs> 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 Undid all his good work there, didn't he, Ricky? With the first goal in a five goal thriller. Froggart down this left hand side. Good man. Osborne! 1 0! What a strike from Simon Osborne! And didn't he enjoy that against his former club? Absolutely no problem with celebrating against his former club there. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see that. I think that's something that comes in later as well. I don't think that's I don't think anyone bothered about that in the nineties. I think it's something that started happening, you know. Well like Tim noughties. said, I think because every they all moved on so often, it would have been impossible to celebrate against anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robbie yeah, Keane Steve. probably just doesn't celebrate anymore, yes. just, just to be safe. <laughs> That's going to say, Steve. Because they were all his boyhood club. <laughs> yeah. I've probably played for him. I can't quite remember, but I, I probably have. <laughs> oh, Keane. That's a great goal all round. A great goal. The funky chicken is back. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Amazing. <laughs> what was what was this funky chicken? It's a dance move, isn't it? Was it an advert as well though at the time? It was massive for a while. Uh chicken tonight. Chicken tonight, that was it. Chicken tonight. <laughs> Other brands of chicken casserole mix are available. Yeah, I but don't, don't buy them. Because chicken tonight is the ultimate <laughs> one. Not funny. I feel like chicken tonight. <laughs> like chicken tonight. Did chicken Don tonight. Goodman have? A, was Don Goodman have? Did he have a sponsorship deal? <laughs> I'd love to think so. <laughs> chicken chasseur. Here we go. <laughs> I love the idea that the executives at Chicken Tonight were looking around the Football League going... <laughs> get me get me, Don Goodman. <laughs> what do you mean Steve Ball was injured for three months? <laughs> Give me Don Goodman's number. Get me, Don Goodman. <laughs> you sure you don't want someone from the Premiership? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some first rate goal. Mickey Stahl having a go at his defence there was superb. <laughs> so much. Absolutely lost it. Um, yeah. promotion pack. A position strengthened by victory at Main Road, courtesy of an own goal by Kit Simons, conceded three minutes before half time. <laughs> oh, it's great. Oh, it's nice really well. good. The power and pace of Don Goodman creating havoc in the city defence, and Simon's leaving his keeper with no chance. Wolves are now just one point. <laughs> I mean, it's going really great havoc. I mean, it's, it's completely avoidable. <laughs> At Fratton Park, nothing went right for Wolves against a Portsmouth side needing victory to move off the bottom of the table. John Durning gave Pompey God, look at that pitch. Oh. Steve Sedgley was incensed when he received a red card following an off-the-ball incident with Matthias Svensson. Sedgley had to be Steve Sedgley comes position. up a lot in our Gold Club <laughs> episodes of being very strange. Really? Yeah, and doing very strange. Like, being funny. Like, think Jerry and Les... Oh. Jerry and Lescott said the other week that, like, pretty much majority of the things that he did, he wouldn't be able to... Like repeat for family audiences. Interesting. There is a famous thing. Paul Butler. I think I've told this story before. He said that um, on his first day, they all got changed at the stadium, and then they'd go and find somewhere to train. And um, he walks in, and Steve Sedgley's in a bath with somebody else, and just a big poo pops up in between the two of them. No. And it was like. <laughs> <laughs> and like just kind of Steve Sedgley just clearly had done it and just kind of leaned back as if like yeah it happens 
<laughs> oh, that's, that's audacious. Gotta be, that's got to be an athletic article at some point in the near future. Because <laughs> there's another one. I don't know if it was definitely Steve Sedgley or not. There was another one apparently around the same time of a player who used to do a poo, like get a big long run of um, toilet roll. Yeah. Do a poo on like the end of it and then walk it through the dressing room like they were walking a dog. I don't know if that was Steve Sedgley or not. I mean, it sounds like Sedgley. It's just a lot of poo-based banter that went on at this time. I recently did a poo in the sea on a stag do in Ibiza, and the stag do stopped talking to me. <laughs> I kind of thought it'd be a good bit of banter, and they. it turns out that was the line. That's where everyone was drawing the line. <laughs> So I, I quite I feel for Steve Sedgley. I, I, I identify with him. <laughs> That's incredible. Anybody watching this will not be able to appreciate Dougie Freeman's goal just for that <laughs> pure moment. Yeah, yeah, sorry to have ruined. I, I wanted to ruin this. Quite. Oh yeah, just 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 to finish off the subject, I, I went completely the other way recently because I I couldn't buy any toilet roll. Um, for at least two days, uh, which was very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I went to eleven shops and, and couldn't find a single roll. Oh, so um, yeah, that was that was a that was a low couple of days. <laughs> Just held it in for two days. <laughs> Didn't have anywhere to go. It's a big forty-eight hours. <laughs> Anyway, Nottingham Forest at home. <laughs> <laughs> what a season. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did him with his eyes. Meant that. You got to you got to claim to have meant that. <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, please. <laughs> What's that defender doing? He just ducked out of the way. <laughs> I'm just not going to defend that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just ducks. This is Alan Brazil on Copons, by the way. Classic Sky Football League coverage. Oh, oh no. The season's second no. trip to Elm Park produces no goals and two sendings off. The first for home defender Paul Bowden. <laughs> oh, Ref! Referee! <gasps> And they ref, played on. Ref. <laughs> that is astonishing. That is astonishing. Oh, that's that was how it ended. I've got so many questions about this game. <laughs> Not going to get them answered. Oh, Dino. Fit again after nearly a year out of action. Just such a great defender to watch he was. Go on, give us the chicken. Ow. <laughs> They'd stop paying him at this point. <laughs> the sponsorship deal elapsed. <laughs> Keen wearing number nine doesn't look right. No, it doesn't, does it? No, it's odd. Odd. Was Keane player of the season this season? He must have been. The festive celebrations continued at Port Vale, where Wolves rode their luck and claimed the points with a goal at the end of each half. 
Mark Atkins served up the opener, and Kevin Muscat made it 1 0 at half time. Oh, it's nice. a great finish. They were battling to avoid their sixth straight defeat, but Doogie Friedman finally made certain of the points in the dying minutes. Again, look at the pitch. <laughs> oh. Oh, come on, is he? Simon, Simon Osborne? Yeah. Dear. He like he was a great old Gold Club episode. People should go back and listen to it. It was so honest about like his role and stuff, and how he just kind of changed. So that's the halfway point. Um, might be a good time to pause for everybody. Yeah, we're into the playoffs. Look at um, that. It's been a good year so far. There's been ups and downs. <laughs> Deary me. Okay. Uh, but hopefully, much more to come in part two. Yeah. Don't mention part twos around Sedgley because. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like anyone, if they're going to take anything away from this, it's uh, uh, Poos and Tim Spears singing the Chicken Tonight ad. <laughs> See you all soon, everybody. Bye.